Hello my friends and welcome back to Minecraft Mine Colonies Byzantine. I'm up at my favourite place in the colony which is the watchtower above the warehouse. Now in the background you're going to see, oh man, the colony is looking amazing. We've made some super amazing progress so far. But as you know, there's always more to do. Now in the background, you might be able to see in the distance, we've decorated the retaining walls over there and got rid of that island in the middle of the water. Now I'll take a closer look to show you guys what we did. Now this is something that I've put off for a long, long time because this was a lot, a lot of busy work. And actually I discovered that if I just filled my pack with the materials we need for the retaining walls, it was actually just much quicker to build these myself, rather than mess around with the builder's tool. The builders are amazing, but for building small decorations like this, it can often be quicker to do it yourself. But the good news is we have a big space in the water now for something, and the guard tower is hooked up with a road. Random nerd will rejoice. Now that's not the only thing. Over here in the background you're also going to see, I'll get a closer look at that actually, yeah, there we go. So also over here, we've got the blacksmith and the smeltery up to level two. Now this area here is a bit ugly. We haven't decorated this yet, but there's lots to do over in this industrial section that's going to take a lot of time. Anyway, here's a look at the builds going up. Now again, it's never nice to see a building made out of wood over here on the Byzantinian colony because the main theme we have going on is beige, cream and brown bricks, as well as that harsh white and terracotta roofs. So it's always a pleasure to get these buildings up to level two, but it's gonna be super important because the smeltery can smelt so many more items the higher level it is. So it's one of the most important buildings to get to level two, but also with the blacksmith, every level adds loads more recipes for us to teach him. And it means we can go in now and teach him all the recipes for extra tools. But not only that, the blacksmith is also great for making things like iron bars and iron chains. Basically, if it's made of metal, the blacksmith is your bro. Oh man, freaking fantastic. Now you'll also see that we've replaced the floor underneath the blacksmith because this was really ugly. I wasn't a fan of the grass look underneath and we've hooked up the road a bit now. So this all looks a bit neater plus the warehouse and the sawmill have been elevated with these hedges and roses. Man, these things look great. But it got me to thinking, we've got a big old space here and I didn't want to just fill this with more trees and more roses, because you know, that's all we do with the empty space around the colony. Let's get the builder's tool out and actually look at some of these statues and decorations. Now there are a few of these, so let's take a look. We want to pick something perfect here, something that represents the industrial power of this district. So here we have a statue of Atlas. I mean, you have the kind of squint and imagine, kind of like a magic eye. I mean, it kind of looks like Atlas. I guess the red thing is a globe, kind of. But man, a lot of copper in this. What are the other statues then? There's a statue brazier, a bit more simple, a bit more humble, but too small for us. A statue cavalry. Oh man, yes, I think this is supposed to be a bit of a knight. So yeah, I think this is supposed to be like a knight in red armor. Kind of, I like the faceplate, and that kind of looks like a horse. Or maybe a llama, maybe he's like riding a llama into battle. Maybe they're effective? I don't know. There's statue column whore. Oh, right, horse. Right, not a, not a lady of the night. So that looks pretty cool and very impressive. It may, might be a bit big though for this area that we got right here. Oh, now what is this? This is a statue of Constantine. What does it say at the front? Flavius Valerius Constantinus Magnus. I think that means this guy was pretty cool. Um, yeah, and I guess the red stuff is kind of like his toga. Oh man, yeah, look at the feet. This looks pretty cool, actually. This could be a, a choice. There's also a statue of an eagle. Now, I think, is this yellow concrete or gold? If it's gold, we're in trouble. Yellow concrete, though, much easier to make. It's very cool, I definitely want one of these, but it looks like the wingspan is gonna mess with our warehouse. A statue of Mary. I mean, why not? This feels like it's something for like wherever we put the church. So we'll keep that in the chamber for now. And an obelisk, wow. So what are we gonna go for? Well, it's a toss up between Atlas and Constantine and the Knights. You know what, this is the industrial section of the colony. I feel like a statue of Atlas is actually the perfect thing for this. Something that represents how the industrial zone 
of our colony really is the workhorse. They're holding the weight of the world, the weight of the colony on their shoulders over here at the industrial sector. Yeah, this could be the one. This is a pretty cool looking statue as well. And also it's kind of a use for the copper that we don't really bother with at the moment. I don't know what that red stuff is, but I guess we'll find out. Let's pull the trigger on this. And we're good to go. Oh, whoa, hang on a sec. So this is pretty tricky. This requires lots of copper, which isn't surprising. But that red stuff is actually stripped mangrove wood. So I think we're going to set J on this. And then we're going to have to go out and see if we can find a mangrove. Yeah, there we go. Now we could just go over to our, our marketplace and buy a mangrove sapling and also an acacia sapling. That'd be the easy way of doing it. But I kind of want to go on a bit of an exploration mission. I haven't left the colony now for what seems like a year. But yeah, we're going to try and track down an acacia tree and a mangrove tree in this episode. So let's go in this direction. There's a temperate highlands. I think that might have what we're looking for, the acacia tree. But if not, we'll find out what it looks like. And I'm kind of excited. Yeah, because it feels like a big part of Minecraft is exploration. And when you build a mine, oh my god, god dragon lich. Yeah, Got to get you in the colony with a name like that. 28 lapis. Do I have 28 lapis? Yeah, of course I do. So yeah, the big problem is we stay on the colony because everything just requires things around the colony. We do a little bit of mining here and there. Grab the lapis. So honestly, yeah, a break from the colony going out to gather some trees. It's going to be a great time. Here you go, chief. Can I help you? Now, I think we might have to make this guy a guard because he sounds like a pretty legendary knight, doesn't he? Or, well, since he's a lich and a dragon lich at that, maybe like a druid or a wizard. Do we have wizards? Maybe a, maybe an enchanter. But yeah, he's in the colony now, and let's go over and find this forest. So here we are on the borders of where we've explored. There's a village over there that we've never raided, but we don't need stuff from villages anymore. No fall damage for me. Oh, now this stuff on the edge of the colony, it looks like these vines have really grown. I think it's apotheosis that makes these keep growing. High grass aplenty. Man, that's crazy. So let's keep going, man. I do like exploring in the world and just finding some of the crazy biomes and terrain that you can stumble upon. Oh, now check this out. There's some dyed terracotta. We might need this stuff, so I might as well just grab it. I want to go home with like a nice pack full of stuff. And clay. Oh my god, clay is really abundant in this biome. So onwards and upwards, it looks like I was wrong. The temperate highlands don't seem to have any mangroves or any acacia. What they do have though is birch, which we don't need. Ugh. So there's not much going on here. Oh man, it's one of these kind of like uh, autumn forests. This reminds me of the area where I built my first colony in, my medieval oak one. And we really lucked out in that series. We've got a really beautiful place to build our colony. Whoa, oh my god, what is that? Oh, and look at this, one of these Sakura groves. Always a very lovely biome. Man, that would be a sweet place to build a castle, and it looks like somebody else already had that idea. Oh, what's that over there? Oh, now that's weird. It's some kind of house. So here we are at this weird, spooky house. So yeah, I generally believe that cobwebs... Oh my god, a snail! That's amazing! Oh, I wish I could have one of those as a pet. Anyway, let's go and check out what this house is. Not much going on. Oh, it's an abandoned colony. Ah, very interesting. Well, we don't need a town hall, but and it's not much of a colony as well. It's just like a, the town hall. But that's pretty cool. Well, okay, we've kind of reached the edge of the world here. Where else can we go on the map? Is there anywhere else nearby that looks cool? Ah, so this is a savanna plateau. There's definitely got to be some acacia there. Quite far away. But, um, wow, yeah. But I think we can do it. Ah, the prairie. Always a nice biome to be in. And we're looking for acacia trees. Is that one? No, that's a magical tree. Oh, and a waystone. Let's go grab it. You can never have too many of these. And also, we can probably just use this to get home quickly if we want. It's always good to just pick up as many waystones as you can and just honestly use them as quick teleports back to your base if you have a system set up. Now I see no acacia from here. Wait a minute, is that acacia over there? Let's go find out. Whoa, look at the size of this fish. That's crazy, what kind of fish are you? A gar. What kind of tree is this weird gray one? 
Oh, it's acacia. I didn't. I had no idea it was this color. Man, it looks weird in this biome. Well, okay, let's grab it. And all we need is one sapling. We got that sapling. Perfect. Slip that in the botany hopper pot and we're good to go. While we're here also, let's grab some terracotta because we need this stuff. It's super common. So that's the acacia taken care of. Now to consider the mangrove. So mangrove grows in swamps. So I suppose I have to look around for a swamp. Well, I don't seem to see any swamps on the map currently, but near to our base, this whole area here is relatively unexplored. Let's go and check it out. Whoa, what is that thing over there? Oh my god, that looks incredible. It's like a giant creeper statue. Covered in vines, oh, spooky as hell. Let's go check it out. Now, how are we going to climb this? Well, that's a stupid question. There's vines all over this mother trucker. So up we go. Wait, oh no. Yeah, there we go. Like Rapunzel's tower. All the way to the top. Oh man, yeah, and free loot. Don't mind if I do. Enchanted book chainsaw. What the hell is that? And enchanted book longevity. Well, I'll take them. They look pretty good. And we got space, so we might as well take everything. Oh, wasabi seeds. Very, very cool. Wait, there's a sushi mod? Oh my god, dudes, we've got to make some sushi. Yeah, holy smokes, soap on a rope, money in the bank. There's a sushi mod. Oh, no way, we've got to add some of this stuff to our kitchen. A rice cooker, a cooler box, a fermentation barrel. Oh man, making your own sushi. That sounds amazing. Yeah, you know what? I want to set up a new farm dedicated to all of the things we need for sushi. I know it's not very Byzantinian, but I, I'm, I'm in love. I want to make sushi on the colony. I think it'd be amazing. One thing the Byzantines did do a lot of, I think, is seafood. So, sushi is kind of close enough. It's a bit Japanese, but we're bringing the Far East to the Middle East, I guess. We're bridging the gap. So it seems like desert is as far removed as swamp as you can get, but I found this pretty cool temple that I want to climb to the top of. There's got to be loot in here. What are we looking at? Is there loot down there? No? Oh, here we go. Oh. Oh. Hang on a sec. I remember this. A ring panel. Oh, but I can't remember what we do to fix this. Well, never mind. Oh my god! What have I done? Where am I? Oh! It's teleported- <laughs> oh my god, wow! It's teleported me from over here... ...all the way back... ...to the Stargate Temple nearby. Oh man, that's really cool! So these are coordinates! Oh, I see, you press it, the rings come down, and... ...yeah, oh, you go back. Oh, that's really cool. And while we're here, of course, we're gonna raid this temple. Nice. Gold blocks are oh, amazing. Oh, what's this? A music disc, Pharrell Aria Biblio. I'll try and uh, play that back at the back at base. A cooking pot from Farmer's Delight. That'll be great in the kitchen. Oh man, it feels like we're going shopping for home uh, for home decorations. Whoa! Check out this helmet. Novelty drinking hat. Decreases the time it takes to drink and eat. Oh wow! And it's a cosmetic thing as well, so we can put this in curios. Where's helmet? Head. Oh man, <laughs> look at that as well. Got a couple of bud lights on my hat. Love it. But yeah, I think I'm going to consider it a bit of a bust. I don't want to spend the whole episode looking for mangroves when we can actually just buy them for emeralds. But we had a pretty sweet exploration. Got some very cool loot. Let's get home. In fact, the ender pearls are going to be priceless. And gold is always a pleasure to grab. So we've got the mangrove sapling, time to put this into this hopper pot over here. We can get rid of the dark oak and empty out all of the stuff in here as well. Put it into the computer. So it fills up nice and neat. And also we'll put the acacia instead of this birch. So that was a pretty cool exploration mission, but what do we want to build this episode? I want to get some more stuff done on the colony. Well, we're going to need some more crops. A, because I want to explore this sushi mod that looks amazing, and it'll help feed our colonists, I'm sure. So that's pretty cool. So I think another farm is in order, and the craft is super simple. Also, I thought cowhands huts were locked behind research, but it turns out they're actually not. So a cowhands hut 
is going to be essential. We're going to build a cow hand hut and an extra farm. So research technology and it's going to be memory aid. More recipes is really important, especially for automation here on the colony. And block play speed in the form of ability. 64 iron. Cool. We'll leave those to brew in the background and let's go and put down these new farms. So with the farms, I want to put the next farm pretty close to this original one. If you imagine the farm as being like on the corner, we have two fields here, the third field. At level five, the farm gets five fields. So we want field number four right here, then field number five right here out front. Then what I think we want to do is mirror that. So have another few fields around the edge and then a farm over on this side. And what that will do is visually give us loads and loads and loads of fields to work with. So take a look, I've put down the farm schematic over there, it's going to be in the corner. Then we're going to add five more fields to mirror what's going on over here. And I've flipped the design of the farm, so it's going to mirror the design over here, over on this side as well. And I think this is going to look really cool and really impressive. I really like the idea of big, huge, sprawling farms. And we're going to need loads and loads of space for loads of different types of crops. The more I think about it, the more I realize we were definitely right to put the larger area over here as the agricultural area because this is pretty huge. The plantation's going to need loads of fields as well. So we're going to make full use of all of this space. Now I'm going to load up the builder with all of the materials plus the tools and we're going to watch them build the entire thing. It's going to be a pretty epic build. We've had to pause the statue of Atlas for now because that can come later. We're going to have to wait for the mangrove trees to give us some logs anyway. So let's do it. So these fields are very simple to build and while it's taking a long time for them to get built, it's mostly because we need to clear out the land first. Builders are still slow at doing that. I don't think Jay or Nikki is ever really going to be a super speed miner. So this area being hilly has certainly given us some problems. Now we do have to be careful with elevation over on this side of things. I don't want everything to be super flat over here, but what I'm thinking is we'll put the farms and the animal huts on a lower level and then raise a level behind it for the plantation and the various plantation fields. In fact, I'm imagining a kind of hanging garden style setup for the plantation with a kind of pyramid of all the plantation fields, but that's a build for later on. Now it looks like Danny got frustrated with how slow Jay was taking to clear out the land for the farm. So she's helped out with Ultimine and oh my God, it's so quick to clear an area when you have Ultimine at your disposal. Now we've uncovered one massive problem, my dudes. There's a load of oil in the place where we're gonna try and build. And this has never been a problem before because we've always built on top of oil. But this time the oil is inside where we're trying to build. And it looks like the builders are having some serious problems with it. Now oil can be really difficult to remove, but it looks like the farm is managing to be built. So it's not a game breaker right now, but we are gonna have to go in game right now and see if we can find a way to get rid of all this ugly, ugly oil. So my dudes, what the hell is going on? We've got oil everywhere and I've tried using blocks to get this out of the way. But when I right click, I can't place blocks where there's oil. It won't let me just block it up. Oh man, so we're in a bit of a pickle. What's the best way to get rid of oil? I mean, what does the game expect us to do? Scoop it up with our freaking hands? No, no, we can't do that. This is an amateur hour, Minecraft. No, my dudes, we are pros, and let's go through the options for getting rid of oil. Now, we could go to the lens of crafting something like a pump to pump out this oil, maybe use it later, but we're a Byzantine colony that doesn't really use oil. I mean, what are we going to do with it? Put it in lamps? 
No, it seems to me that actually scooping it up with our hands is probably a good idea. Now, those hands are going to be filled with buckets, but if I look at this right, there's only about like 20 blocks of oil. So I'm going to head back to base, make some buckets, and maybe we can just scoop this up. Dude, it's the floating squid. How's it going, bro? Doing some backstroke along the river? That's a good point as well, man. So we're in the habit of naming things now, both the tavern and the university have got some amazing names in the comment section. And we'll probably do like a roundup where we just name everything in one go based on the best decisions. But yeah, we also need a name for the river. So yeah, the river needs a name as well. Something enigmatic and uh, yeah, powerful. The basic fluid tank from Mechanism can hold 32 buckets and it only costs one extra iron and a few redstone. So it looks like this is the one. Also, to sweeten the deal, the basic fluid tank can become a kind of bucket. If we hold shift, it says bucket mode no, but I'm fairly sure there's a button that lets us switch modes. And there we go, cleared up those control conflicts, and now we can turn this into a bucket. So now, a mechanism tank, amazingly, is a 32 bucket bucket. It's like a giant bucket. Someone got some duct tape and quack quack quacked together 32 buckets into a giant bucket beast. Anyway, does this work? I now own this item, that's good to know. Oh, there we go! Oh, it does work! This is a great way of getting rid of oil. So if you're following along at home and you have some oil issues of your own, do be advised that mechanism tanks function as buckets and you can literally scoop it up with your hands if you have a bucket or a tank in your hands. But honestly, it's just one of those weird things. Usually with oil, I just kind of build on top of it and don't have to worry about it. But this time, we've dug into the hill and the oil has just appeared. Ugh. But it's good to cover this because this is going to happen to you guys as well at home. Oh my god, I think we've done it! Yes, we've solved our oil problem. Let's get rid of that. Okay. But there's one more build on our to-do list and you've guessed it. It's the cowhand's hut. Now again, I kind of do want all of the animal farms to be right next to each other. I think that's a much cooler look. Oh, now this is a big boy. Oh, this is a really big boy. But that's good news because it means it's going to look after the cows quite well. Now often the pack makers that design these animal farming huts get it a little bit wrong because these animals are really difficult to wrangle and if the building isn't built correctly, the animals can escape super easily. So this is going to be a bit of a trial by fire for Spermanti and we'll see how well the cows stay inside the building. But what does it look like at level one, two, three, four, five? Nice, so at level three, it gets an extra hut over there. Pretty cool, I like it. Oh man, you know what? This is a pretty good looking building as well. Let's slot this into position. Now we're gonna do a bit of an experiment with this build. You guys have said that you can actually build buildings all the way up to level three straight away. So we're gonna see if we can do that by selecting level three here pressing tick and seeing what happens, but I do believe I've tried this before and it only builds the building at level one. Yeah, look at this, so it's only gonna build this at level one. There's nothing we can do. But there's nothing here that's super surprising, so let's grab this stuff and get it built. So work has commenced on the cow hands hut. This is the first and arguably most important animal building you can get on the colony. It's available without any research and honestly, I slept on this kind of hard. I do think the cow hands hut is a better option than the fisherman's hut because meat is as good if not better than fish, but also you get leather, which is essential for so many crafts and guard armor early on. Now, one of the big things we're doing this episode as well is setting ourselves up in the future for maybe building some sushi. I want to expand my kitchen to be able to make sushi and the farm plots, I want to have some sushi growing crops. So probably things like rice, wasabi, and I don't know what else, like soy, soybeans? But here we go, the cow hands hut, level one. You can't skip straight to level three. I wish you could though. Let's get in game now and recruit a farmer and a cow hand. Okay, so the cow hands hut locked into position. Now we're gonna have to get cows ourselves. That's one of the quirks of these animal farms is they don't create animals for you. There's no actual way into the bit where the cows are held. And I guess that's good news. There's no way they can escape if no one can actually get in here. Although it might make getting cows in there quite tricky. Well, okay, let's head over to the tavern then and recruit a couple of dudes. Now we're also looking for a farmer as well. 
So I think two dudes is required. Oh, Uncle Thundercrutch. Oh my god, that's a name. Luckily enough, he costs honeycomb, so we can't get Uncle Thundercrutch into the colony just yet. Keep it in your pants, bro. Sklerbetha Stony. Very nice. Ah, now this is more believable. 36 redstone, we have 56 honors. So, boom. Now, a farmer is less important because we already have one in the colony. We can get a second farmer, no worries, at a later date. But we do want a cow hand right now. I want to get farming cows straight off the bat. Now, I've also got some of the waystones that I gathered on my trip to go and get some wood. So maybe it's time to put one over here at the agricultural area. Agriculture. Boom. Oh, I almost forgot we recruited God Dragon Lich. And he hasn't become a knight yet. And his stats are actually really good for a cow hand. So we'll get him in here. And I guess, Sklerbetha, you're going to be farmer number two. There we go, locked into position. Now, it's a bit of a waste of stats because Sklerbetha also has strength 22 and some good other stats. But she'll level up these stats anyway as she does some farming. Right, time to wrangle some heifers. Have I got any wheat on me? No. But I can go and grab some from over here. No sweat. Wait, hang on a sec. I think I remember seeing a traveling trader over here. Yeah, let's go and grab some leads from them. Now, one of you guys said that my sword has a quirk. It actually converts loot into XP. And that's something we don't want to happen because I want to get some leashes from these llamas. So we're going to kill this guy. Sorry, dude, but it's got to be done. Boom, and that's given us two of these leads that are going to be perfect for getting a couple of cows. Oh, no, look at this. It looks like above the town hall, there's a couple of cows over on that hill. So let's go and grab those guys. Oh, uh, yeah, I do love these retaining walls. This area is just looking so much nicer now. We really do need to get these buildings up to level three, though. Get rid of some of this wood. Okay, so I've got the leash. Boom. Come here, little cow. Where was he? He's around here somewhere. I saw him just a second ago. Wait, he hasn't died, has he? I just heard him woof. Or well, not woof. What do, what do cows do? Snort. I guess he snorted. And I don't mean a line. There we go. Oh, two of them. Here we go. Come here, you. One. And you. Two. Amazing. Now they're leashed to me and I can get them home. Or can I? We're kind of landlocked up here. There's lots of fences. Now if you go too far away with a leash on, they will pop off the leash. Well, let's see if they'll fall off after me. I'm going to dig away this wall. You coming over here, boys? Will you come off? Yes! Oh my god, it works! They took some fall damage, but they're A-OK. -okay. Now, my friends, you're going on an exciting journey. You're going to go underground. We're going to take the railway tunnel over to the farm. I don't think transporting using a waystone will keep my cows with me. OK, here we go. Now, again, we're going to have to dig away the fences to get them into the cowhands hut. Wait, this guy's... Oh, no, he popped off. Come on, dude, don't do that. No, not in there, not in there. Oh, that was close. Dancing with death here. And we have arrived, my friends. Got my axe. Let's chop up this wall. Wait, where'd the wall go? In you come. Then we'll kind of fix this wall with this diorite stuff. It's not a great look, but we can fix that later on. But here we go. Give me the leads back. And we've done it. We've got two cows in here. So the cow hands hurt. Recall the worker. God Dragon Lich. Oh my god, you look amazing. But what tool do you need to get going? He needs an axe. Oh right, of course, because he is also judge, jury, and executioner for these mother truckers. So it's okay. You can borrow our iron axe. No, you can't because you're level one. Okay, you need a stone axe. So we'll get you set up with that no sweat. Although, I think the blacksmith should be able to make stone axes, so one should be on its way. Yeah, there we go. Looks like the blacksmith is making that. So what other kind of settings do we have here? Well, breeding is on and feeding is on. Oh wait, there's some new stuff. Milk attempts, one. Stew attempts, one. And per days, one. Oh, right, so if things get a bit out of control, we can slow down the farmer and stop him from breeding and feeding. Well, he'll need some buckets if he wants to get some milk. So it's kind of good that we brought some buckets anyway. Take these, my bro, and maybe he'll get some milk. 
Oh yeah, look at that, he's got milk in his hand. Oh, that's amazing, I love that. I love that to bits. Well, okay, let's leave him to it and wrap up the episode. So my dudes, thank you for watching this episode of Minecraft Mine Connolly's Byzantine. This episode, we messed around a lot, did some research. I've got a new cool hat. We explored for some trees, I think. And we built a farm, some fields, and a cowhand's hut. Between now and next episode, I'm gonna try and get those two buildings up to level three. Flesh out the farms and tidy up all of that rogue dirt. So that fingers crossed next episode, we can focus our efforts on sushi. That sounds pretty cool. Anyway, don't forget to hit like on the video and subscribe as well. And I'll see you next episode for some more Byzantine. Take care.